Hello, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, we're really happy to uh, be talking with you tonight. Um, we're gonna go over a couple of quick points before we get, begin the event tonight, but I just wanna give everyone a moment to uh, get settled into the event. Um, please feel free to get comfortable. We're happy that you're joining us for an hour of your evening or late afternoon, wherever you're logging in from. Um, I will introduce myself and then we'll have, uh, hopefully you can see the nice panel view where you can see us all. Um, you'll have a chance to learn who we are in just a minute and we'll be talking and sharing a lot about um, our community and program with you in, in just a bit. But um, my name is Elise Murphy. I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment for UNE's Westbrook College of Health Professions, working with our graduate and professional programs within what we call WCHP. And I'm um, thrilled to be joined tonight by our Physician Assistant Program. Um, so um, before we do introductions, I wanna just go through a quick, um, couple quick notes so that you have a sense of tonight's format. We are recording tonight's session, as I might have mentioned. So if you do need to step away, this will be made available to you, uh, most likely tomorrow or by Friday at the latest. Um, if you have any questions for our panel, we want you to engage with us throughout the session. We are gonna do a bit of a program overview just so that everyone has some baseline information about UNE and &E in our program. And then about halfway through the event, we'll open it up to a discussion for um, with our panel. So please feel free to use the Q&A feature so that we can um, make sure that your questions get answered. And if there isn't a, a time, um, you know, time to answer all the questions, please feel free to follow up um, with us. We're happy to answer any additional questions that you might have about UNE, our program, um, or applying. So before we dive into our presentation, I think it might be nice for us to go around the group and have everyone introduce themselves. So. Can I start with my colleague, Jess, from the Office of Graduate Admissions? Yeah, of course. Hi, I'm Jess, and I'm the Admissions Coordinator for the Physician Assistant Program. Cool. And um, Jess has some very fast typing fingers, so Jess will be answering any questions related around admissions and the Q&A. Tonight's um, event is really to learn about our PA program and meet some of our PA um, faculty and students. So We'll be leaning heavy on that and a little less on admissions, but um, in a couple of minutes, we'll share an upcoming opportunity where you can connect with us about applying to um, our PA program. So let's get to our PA program. Dr. Vilmore, would you like to start off our introductions? Good evening, everybody. My name is Dr. Dana Vilmore. I am the program director here at UNE. Very nice. Thank you, Dr. Vilmore. What about you, uh, Professor Bate Withers? We'd love to hear from you. Sure, so I am Professor Bates Withers. I am one of the core members of the didactic faculty. I work with students in their first year here in the PA program. Excellent, very nice. Excited to talk with you tonight. And now to our students. Uh, Gina, would you like to introduce yourself and, and share a little bit about um, where you're coming from too? Sure. Um, my name is Gina Party. I'm a second year PA student at UNE. I'm originally from Falmouth, Maine, and um, right now I'm doing a clinical rotation in Saco, Maine, which is about 20 minutes away from Portland. Very nice. And what about you, Diana, last but not least? I'm also a second year physician assistant uh, or student, and I was born in South Jersey, but I've lived multiple other areas since then. I'm currently in my family medicine rotation um, in Waterville, Maine. Very nice. And you've got some cute pups in the background, which we love. They're a little loud today, I'm sorry. No need to apologize. You're at home and they're you know, wondering, when are you gonna give them attention? So in a little bit, but maybe Diana and uh, Gina look familiar. They um, were a part of our panel session back in July. So what would be nice is, um, We'll touch base with them where they're at in their rotations. I think, are you both still in your second rotation, but a little further than the last time we spoke, right? Very nice. Okay, so we'll touch upon how has their experience changed and transitioned over the last couple of weeks. But Dr. Vilmore, do you want to share the presentation so we can begin? Excellent, thank you. And to our attendees, give us a sec as we just get this set up. Want to make sure that things are operating appropriately. Well, 
on my end, and this is going to be the question that we always wonder, why do we have some black bars over our presentation? But Dr. Vilmore, why don't you um, go to the next slide and we'll see. It looks good on my end, so we'll um, just hope it stays that way. And if our attendees, if for some reason our presentation isn't working, please just drop a message in the Q&A just so we can know how it looks on your end. But uh, we've already met our speakers, so we can go on to our next slide, where um, today is a, a bit, here's an outline for a bit of uh, tonight's uh, event. We'll go through, um, uh, prof uh, Dr. Vilmer will share a little bit about UNE's PA program, the curriculum and clinical training, talk about student life and support, and then we'll go into our panel discussion. But before we dive into our PA program, I wanna just share a little bit about UNE and um, the programs here. So we're proud to say that UNE is the number one provider uh, for health professionals in the state of Maine. We are committed to educating health leaders who make a difference in their, um, the lives of their patients and communities that they work in. Um, we have over 12 graduate and doctoral health related programs, including our PA program, as well as our College of Dental Medicine, College of Osteopathic Medicine, and within our Westbrook College of Health Professions, we have a, a wide variety of health-related programs, some of which you see here. And tonight, you'll learn a little bit more about um, our interprofessional um, education, our collaboration that happens within our graduate programs. So we're really excited that you get to, get to learn more about UNE and our PA program this evening. So, and the next slide, this is just giving you a sense of where we're located in Maine, if you've never been. Um, we are in Southern Maine and we have two main campuses, one in Biddeford and one in Portland. You'd be based on the Portland campus. Um, and just giving you a sense, you know, of if you're wanting to visit Boston or New York, it's um, very manageable. We have a great little airport. Uh, Portland Jetport is great. So. Um, we kind of have the best of both worlds, which is what we'll talk about in the next couple of slides. So a little bit more about our Biddeford campus. Um, this is just a, an aerial view of our Biddeford campus. We're um, clearly very fortunate to live in a beautiful, beautiful state. And um, on our Biddeford campus, we have our undergraduate population and um, currently it houses our College of Osteopathic Medicine, which um, in a few years is actually gonna move up to our Portland campus uh, to join the rest of our graduate professional programs, which is very exciting in terms of the collaboration that's gonna happen amongst our health programs. Um, you will live off campus. So if you are living closer to the Biddeford campus as a Portland student or as a UNE student, you do have access to the Biddeford campus that has its own gym facilities, library. So I wanna mention that because um, you know, you have uh, two campuses really at your disposal. Disposal. Um, in the next slide, we'll see uh, just a view of our Portland campus, which again is really our graduate focused campus. We do have some undergraduate programs like our dental hygiene, our um, nursing students who transition up in a portion of their undergraduate um, years up to the Portland campus, but this is where we have all of our graduate health programs outside of COM, our College of Osteopathic Medicine for right now. Um, and a little bit more about Portland. Um, Portland is a great city with a lot of um, different activities to do. This is a look at downtown Old Port, which is very historic and quaint and right on the water. So there's great um, shops and restaurants and um, beautiful museums and concert venues. So there's a lot to do. And hopefully tonight our students can shed a little bit about a little light on how they balanced, um, you know, their coursework, but also living in um, the great state of Maine. So we'll, we'll maybe hear from them in a little bit about that. But um, outside of Portland, you know, life in Maine is really wonderful. Um, you know, they call it vacation land and the way life should be for a reason because you really can have a balanced life uh, where you can pursue, you know, outdoor activities throughout all the seasons. So we're in the summer, so we're obviously enjoying a lot of activities on the water and the ocean, but there are local ski mountains, beautiful hiking trails. So you can really incorporate um, some of those aspects and um, those passions that you have 
while living here, um, while a student in the program. So I think that's my quick spiel because really we wanna spend a lot of time talking about the PA program. So Dr. Vilmore, I'd love to hand it over to you. All right, you can hear me okay. We can, but um, you might've moved your mouse and now we have some, some black bars, but it looks like it's, it's going away. So we'll just work with it, perfect. There we go. Yeah, I had to unmute myself and the black bar came up. Oh man, stay unmuted. <laughs> yes. All right. So I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about our program. Um, we've been at this since 1996. And this past May, we graduated our 24th class. So we've been here almost 30 years. Um, we are the only PA program in the state of Maine. So if you're looking to go to PA school in Maine, we are it. Um, but we also are recognized throughout New England. And we put an emphasis really on the needs of our um, rural uh, areas here in Maine and Northern New England. Um, we do a lot of simulation and case-based learning, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. Uh, we do real world training. Uh, there's opportunities for interprofessional learning, and we do have a decent amount of diverse clinical rotations as well, um, both in Maine and also in the surrounding states, and even as far away as Hawaii. And we also uh, have a peer mentorship program where you get paired up with a student who's in the cohort above you. So you get some mentoring that way. So our mission here at UNE's PA program is to prepare master level primary care physician assistants to be highly skilled members of interprofessional healthcare teams. And our program is committed to developing clinicians who will provide compassionate, high quality and evidence-based patient-centered healthcare to people of all backgrounds and cultures throughout their lifespans. So our program is an accelerated 24 month full-time program um, where you'll receive a master of science in physician assistant studies. Um, the timeline, you have six semesters um, starting in the summer and students will then uh, matriculate uh, through uh, that late May, uh, that summer semester and eventually graduate uh, two Mays from then. So you'll have 48 weeks of your didactic or preclinical coursework in the classroom. And then you'll have 48 weeks of your clinical rotations training. So a little bit about our didactic year curriculum. When you start in summer, right after Memorial Day, uh, you start out with getting your foundations uh, for your other classes. So we teach you anatomy, uh, we do the principles of bioscience class, which I head up, um, and that's kind of a um, very quick but intense dive into cell biology, genetics, immunology, and microbiology. Uh, you also learn about professional and ethical issues, and then we start uh, the clin med, clin assessment, and pharmacology sequence um, with the first of those three in the summer. That's kind of a module uh, based course where you start out with ophthalmology, you move into uh, ears, nose, and throat, and then go on from there. So body systems modules. And then in the fall, uh, you continue on with ClinMed 2, ClinAssess 2, and Pharmacology 2. So a little bit more about ClinAssess. Um, you're learning how to do the physical exam and diagnostics that go along with uh, treating those conditions that you learn about in clinical medicine. And then in pharmacology, you learn about all the medications that you would use and treatments for those same conditions. So they interlock with each other. Uh, Evidence-based medicine one, you'll be starting to learn how to uh, critique medical literature, um, which is really important for when you're going to be practicing evidence-based medicine in the future. And then we have our integrating seminar course, um, which Professor Bates Withers heads up. And that one is doing case-based learning of um, diseases that patients may present with in those modules that you're learning um, 
from ClinMed, ClinAssess, and Pharmacology. So that kind of brings it all together in um, simulation format, but also you're playing the patient and the provider. And then the IGEP one or interprofessional geriatrics education program uh, starts in the fall. I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a few slides. So I won't go deep into that yet, but in the fall, you're really learning um, the basics of geriatric care. Okay. And then in the spring, you're going to be continuing on with clinical medicine, clin assessment, pharmacology, and integrating seminar. Um, You'll also have Evidence-Based Medicine 2, which is doing more of a journal club type of format um, for looking at conditions, um, maybe controversial treatments for them, and uh, looking at articles that have addressed those. Um, you'll also have an Introduction to Public Health course. Uh, the Specialty Disciplines course uh, encompasses pediatrics, psychiatry, um, ER medicine and hospitalist and surgical medicine. Um, and then IGEP-2 in the spring is focusing more on end of life, um, cognitive decline um, and palliative care. So that's kind of a smattering of what we do in the first year. Okay, so a little bit more about simulation and case-based learning. Uh, we do a lot of work with high-fidelity mannequins that mimic real-life patient scenarios. And we just did that today, actually, uh, where we had our students learn how to do intramuscular injections, kind of like a vaccine, into these mannequins' thighs. So it was pretty cool today. Um, but we also do uh, mannequins... Um, use them for respiratory and cardiac emergencies, learning how to deal with those, uh, patients who have traumatic brain injuries and also our advanced cardiac life support um, training, which is actually run by Professor Bates Withers. So he's our instructor here and he's awesome at it. And you'll work in teams to manage those critical patients. We also do um, work with standardized patients and human models. So these are people out in the community that act um, outpatient scenarios for you so you can get used to treating real people and examining real people. Um, and the human models are there for our uh, pelvic exam training so that you know how to do a proper pelvic exam before you go out into your clinical rotations. Um, we also use the standardized patients for our testing, um, the OSCEs. So those are your objective structured clinical experiences. Um, this is where you're given a chief complaint by that patient and you interview them and figure out what is wrong and come up with a treatment plan. Um, so a lot of case-based learning with these. So both mannequins and real life humans. Okay, and then we had um, this past year done a video so that you can see some of the mannequins in our simulation center. Um, and these are actually our students that are in their second year now. Having the Sim Center is really unique for RPA students because they're getting to experience what it's like taking care of certain patients that have really critical conditions or other pathological conditions that you may not see all the time. Okay, and now the patient is in venous pack. The Sim Lab gives us the opportunity to use the standardized patient mannequins, and those mannequins can breathe, have certain heart sounds, belly sounds, and then we can hook them up to monitors to simulate what their vitals would look like. So you should hear an S3 gallop at the apex. It's nice to come here and use the mannequin so that we're able to listen to those heart sounds, listen to the lung sounds that would be associated with that, as well as get used to what we would actually see out in the real world of looking at a monitor and putting everything that we've learned in separate classes into one room. We have been teaching our students how to do venipuncture or drawing blood from patients with the mannequins. So they're able to practice their technique on how to draw blood without hurting anybody. And then we did a pulmonary lab where they got to hear different abnormal lung sounds. We also do different arrhythmia labs where they can hear what the heart sounds like, what the EKGs look like in people with different arrhythmias, different murmurs. It's always that hands-on experience. 
I come from a background in that as well prior to PA school, is that we learn about this stuff in class, but to have the sim lab here, it really helps solidify a lot of that knowledge that we read and learn about in class. That gives you a little bit of a look of our sim lab. And then some more real world training that we do. We have an extended pharmacology training here at UNE where you're not only getting pharmacology in your first year, but you're also getting it again in your clinical year with our clinical therapeutics course. And that one is in your fall and spring semesters of your second year. So you get to hear of medication updates, but also do some more of that evidence-based medicine um, approach where you're looking at new treatments and how they work. You also get training in the medication assisted treatment or MAT uh, training. So learning how to treat substance use uh, in your time with us here. So you'll be um, able to prescribe things like buprenorphine. And then we also have started uh, this past year and we'll definitely continue on with MOAB training or the management of aggressive behavior. So how to de-escalate a situation with an agitated patient or another person, which is important in healthcare nowadays. Oops. And then a little bit more about IGEF. So um, as I said before, it's two semesters of getting that dedicated instruction in managing older adult patients. Um, but in this course, you're also interacting with other health profession students here uh, to manage these complex patients. So in the fall, we're mainly working with the pharmacy students um, so you can learn about those medications that maybe are not appropriate for those who are over 65 anymore. Um, and we also... Uh, have worked with the PT program, so physical therapy and how to do home uh, evaluations. Um, we've worked with occupational therapy students as well. Um, each semester is a little bit different, um, so you get to work with other health professions and see what their scope of practice is. And you're visiting what we call elder teachers out in the greater Portland community. Um, so in the fall, you're looking at uh, independent living facilities out there um, and meeting an elder teacher and taking a full history on them and kind of using this shared decision making to help them live out the best uh, rest of their lives um, according to their wishes, like what's important to them at this point. Um, and in the spring, we go out to... Um, assisted living uh, facilities where you interact with patients who have dementia or cognitive decline um, to see how to uh, best communicate with them and develop your bedside manner. We also do virtual reality experiences during these two courses where you get to experience having um, sensory loss like hearing or vision loss. Um, you get to experience what it's like to have dementia that is worsening. Um, just how confusing and disorienting that can be, and also the process of death and dying. So it's a really interesting course and um, explores the humanistic side of medicine. And then moving into your clinical year, you have eight clinical rotations starting in the summer. Um, they're six weeks in length, uh, typically and you have two family medicine rotations, you have two internal medicine rotations, both inpatient in the hospital and outpatient. Uh, there's an emergency medicine rotation, a surgical rotation, and then you have these two called the core selectives and electives. The core selective you can pick from pediatrics, women's health, uh, behavioral health, um, another geriatrics or something like that. Um, and then the elective is something that you're interested in. So it might be cardiology, it might be um, palliative care, um, those types of uh, rotations. And then you also have uh, the clinical therapeutics one and two, as I had mentioned before, more of that pharmacology training. And then preparation for clinical practice one, two, and three are where your end of rotation exams um, live. You're also learning how to do um, certain skills during your clinical year and practicing those, uh, your OSCEs, of course, and seminars. Uh, during those end of rotation uh, callback weeks uh, to further your training. 
All right. And then for rotations available, um, a lot of them are regional. So many are in Maine or in northern New England, but we do have uh, rotations as far away as Florida, Utah, Hawaii, um, you name it, we probably have a rotation there. Um, and there are opportunities to apply to what we call pods where students rotate in a single healthcare system. Um, so you may be in the main health pod or you might be in the Bangor pod, um, rural health pods. Uh, and some of those do come with scholarships to help defer costs, which is great for students who are looking for housing. And really important is that we are not expecting you to develop your own rotations. We do this for you. And if there is a specific site that you do have interest in going to for a rotation, we can um, help you develop that. So you're not doing it on your own. We are here to help you. Um, we do have a grant that uh, we have funds for students um, called the HRSA grant. It's the Health Resources Services and Administration grant, where we are helping to train PAs and other health profession students to practice healthcare in those rural and underserved communities. And not only do you get a scholarship with this to help defer costs, um, but you're also placed at dedicated rural and underserved sites and given additional education. And a lot of this is interprofessional education. Um, it's a really great opportunity. Okay. And then for YUNE, we have a lot of opportunities for interprofessional education, and we're adding more each year to our curriculum. Um, there's an ample number of service learning opportunities where you can go out and volunteer in the community and make a difference there. It's a very supportive environment um, with faculty who are there to help you. Um, they act as your advisors and really the um, amount of resources that the Portland campus has for our graduate students is great. It's a very focused campus for those graduate students. Um, there's a Student Academic Success Center to help them out with test taking, um, studying strategies, because it is a different ballgame when you're going to graduate school. So very supportive environment. And um, our faculty all have an open door policy and are always willing to meet with you to help you out. And then a little bit more about the interprofessional education. Um, we have our Center for Excellence in Collaborative Education, or CC. And really, that's our hub at UNE for interprofessional education and collaborative practice. Um, we are working with them all the time to develop new opportunities for students to work together um, across disciplines and um, really get prepared for what it's like to work in a team out in the community when they graduate. They have um, an interprofessional education or IPE honors distinction that you can get, um, which looks great to employers and you get um, a cord and certificate at the end of your time with them. Um, we're uh, adding interprofessional simulations. So caring for complex patients with a team of students. Uh, there's cross-disciplinary service learning. So you can volunteer with other health profession students and get to know them. There's the team immersions or IPD, um, where they're also kind of that simulated uh, complex patient cases, but with standardized patients. So actors from the community where you're working with a team to help treat them. Um, there's a case competition, and there's also many grants that you can apply for too. Okay, and then some of the service learning programs uh, that we do have in WCHP, uh, we have the Westbrook Housing Authority, which is in Westbrook, right outside of Portland. Um, it's an independent living uh, for those older adults in that community, and uh, we're working to kind of develop um, screening and uh, guiding them to healthy habits over there. Um, there's the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital at Maine Med Center, where you can volunteer there. The Milestone Shelter and Detox Center to help those with substance use disorder. 
Um, there's a harm reduction program at Cumberland County Jail, and we're kind of expanding that, hopefully doing some vaccinations this fall there. And Partners for World Health is an organization um, that helps give supplies to um, medical supplies to schools or to communities that need them, and you can volunteer there as well. And then our CUP AHEC scholars or the Care for the Underserved Pathways. Um, this is part of the Honors Distinction Program through CC. And with this, you're understanding the role of healthcare providers in addressing those health disparities and social determinants of health, especially in those rural and underserved communities. Um, and we do have a number of students who are considered these CUP scholars. And really for service learning, it helps instill a lifelong commitment to serving those uh, communities that may not have the most resources and gives you an understanding of different cultures and health challenges in those societies. Um, you get to work with those other professions, improve your communication skills with those professions and your clinical skills and build relationships with people from other backgrounds and cultures and enhance your knowledge in your program of study. And as far as the Portland campus um, and the UNEP program, we are here to help. We are a um, collaborative environment. We have that student mentor program. We have a very involved alumni network where uh, many of them precept for our students. Some teach and uh, lectures as well. Um, and we even have one uh, alumnus who is a full-time professor here. So you get to see what we have created <laughs> for the PAs out in the community. And as far as our faculty go, it's a big mix of experience from eight years to 45 years as PAs in all different disciplines and specialties. We have that open door policy for advising and student support. Um, and then the on-campus support services, uh, the Student Academic Success Center, I can't say enough about them. Um, they have learning specialists to help you figure out, okay, why are you having issues on these exams? Can you uh, get some help with maybe how to read test questions and how to answer them um, in a better way? Um, study strategies, uh, time management strategies, all of these types of things um, to help make your transition into that graduate education world an easier one. The Student Access Center helps with those who need accommodations for disabilities. Um, the Career Services Office helps um, to get you prepped for your job search and even is available for you as an alumni. Um, so that you can get help with uh, getting employment. Uh, we have counseling services available for our students for free. The Student Health Center is always there for you if you have any needs there. And then Graduate Student Affairs um, works to help with our fundraising um, and events for graduate students. And I think what's really great about the Portland campus is that it is a graduate focused campus. So you don't have as many undergrads kind of running around. <laughs> Everybody is there to be, you know, in their program and is uh, ready and focused to do all of their studies. So they're there to support you. Um, but you do have access to the Biddeford campus if you need it. And um, as Elise had said before, the College of Osteopathic Medicine, uh, they will be coming over to Portland in 2025 to join our health professions campus so that all of us are on one campus. And I think it'll be a great move. And Elise, go ahead. Yeah, and here's a, another look at our um, Portland campus. So uh, we're wrapping up with our presentation. Thank you, Dr. Vilmore, for that information. I saw a lot of great questions coming through, so we're going to spend some time um, diving into those. But um, before we move on to the dis panel discussion, I do want to mention some upcoming opportunities, both virtual and um, in person. As I mentioned, next week we do have an application walkthrough um, on um, the 16th from 12 to 1. So if you haven't applied or you have questions about applying, please feel free to join us for that event. And then I'm happy to share um, and excited to share, we've made registration live for our on-campus open house on Saturday, September 16th. 
Um, this link here, grad.une.edu, um, is a form that you're all in our system because you registered for the event. So as soon as you go into um, submit that form, the, the system will recognize you and you all have personalized uni pages that have um, details on where you are in your, your application process, but um, we'll have uh, uh, opportunities for you to register for events. So I would direct you to there or um, you can go to our website for more information, but I'll make sure that you all have um, the link so that you can register and join us for our on-campus open house in September. So I think the next slide, Dr. Vilmore, is just some follow-up contact information. Um, you're welcome to follow the, the PA program on Instagram and connect with our Office of Graduate Admissions. Here's our general email, as well as my colleague, uh, Jessica, does her email here. So feel free to grab that and reach out um, around any questions. Um, so I think, uh, why don't we transition to the, the panel discussion if our panelists are up for it? Sure. Cool, very nice. Well, we have some questions that um, we received through the registration process, but we will probably go to the Q&A in just a short uh, couple of minutes. So please feel free to continue to submit your questions there. But I wanted to start a little bit about um, the dive in a little more um, around the didactic year and um, talking about some first year support. So I wanna start with Professor Bates Withers and I'd really love for you to expand upon your role and, and, and what you do within the first year. We heard doc, uh, Dr. Villamore share about um, the integrated seminar course. So can you share a little bit more about that? And then we'll ask Gina and Diana to share um, their experience as first year students. So take it away. Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Elise. Um, so I work with students in all three semesters of our didactic year. Um, in the summer, I give a lecture series that is part of our human anatomy course. I work with two of our other faculty, one who runs our conventional anatomy lecture, um, one who runs our anatomy lab, and then I give a lecture series on the clinical applications of anatomy. Um, where we have really focused in on diagnostic imaging this summer, learning radiology. Um, in the fall and spring, I teach our integrating seminar course, which is our case-based learning course. Um, in the fall, we start to gradually ramp up knowledge and skills, starting with some basic applications of writing progress notes, narrowing down a diagnosis based on a patient's symptoms, um, and then applying that knowledge to more and more complex cases. Um, at the end of fall semester, we finish up with some time in the simulation lab where we set up our simulation lab like a medical office. Um, and we have either students or standardized patients who will play the role of a patient coming into the office with an illness. Um, and then our first year students will evaluate that simulated patient, take their medical history, perform an examination, um, and give them a diagnosis and talk to them about their treatment plan. In the spring semester, we are entirely in the simulation lab, um, and we start out with outpatient cases similar to what we did in the fall, um, and then build up in complexity from there, introducing some inpatient medicine cases as well. Um, and we finish up with a high fidelity simulation module that is focused on management of patients who are decompensating um, emergency critical care patients. And we work with our high fidelity simulators for those cases um, where you can perform procedures on the mannequins. You can put breathing tubes into them, put in chest tubes. Um, you can take vital signs on them, do CPR, um, defibrillate them to shock them out of an abnormal heart rhythm. Um, so that is the wrap up of our spring course. Um, I also teach almost the entirety of our cardiology module in the fall. Um, our faculty do help each other out with each other's courses. Um, so although we are each course coordinators for our particular course, um, there is certainly some crosstalk among us. I teach for both the 
clinical medicine and clinical assessment course in the fall. Um, and then in the spring, we do our advanced cardiac life support course, which is purely cardi emergency cardiology focused um, and is really focused on how to manage patients that are deteriorating at an advanced level. Uh, it's really an advanced CPR course that it encompasses the new skills of a highly medically trained provider. Wow, that's a lot. And what um, what I hear is, you know, it's great that you're setting a foundation. You continue to build upon and develop those experiences as you go through your first year. And it sounds like first year PA students spend a lot of time with you, um, Professor Bates Withers. Um, Gina and Diana, can you walk us through uh, your first year and and how was it like interacting with those courses? What was helpful? Um, and if you want to certainly apply it to, you know, how was it helpful in getting you set up for your second year, please feel free. We want to hear a bit of, of your insight on your first year experience. Gina, why don't you begin? Oh, Diana, actually, <laughs> we'll go with Gina. Sure. Um, so I think just about every class that we take as first year PA students is so helpful, um, just uh, for our education and then um, for applying things into our clinical practice. But I think that integrating seminar specifically was so helpful for me personally, um, just because I feel like, you know, obviously you learn a lot in the classroom, but I felt like integrating seminar was such a great way to actually apply everything that we were learning. Um, and it was definitely very scary at first to, um, you know, step into that role as a provider and um, basically go through a whole visit with students and standardized patients, but you end up doing it so much that it almost becomes like second nature. And you know, ever since I started clinical year, I've felt so comfortable um, going into patients' rooms, interacting with patients, and getting a full history, doing a physical exam. Um, so I just feel like that class was so integral um, to our learning as students. I agree with Gina. Um, IS was one of the classes that I found very, very beneficial. Um, I, really prepared you very well for clinical year. And it taught us not only a lot about clinical uh, and how to be a good practitioner, it also taught us a lot about ourselves. And I think any student that enters any PA program needs to learn more about themselves before they go out to the real world as a practitioner. So I'm very grateful for that in that class. Um, I also found IJEP very helpful, especially in terms of the family medicine, because we do get a lot of geriatric patients. And I'm currently in my family medicine rotation and I've had a lot of geriatric patients and I do reflect back to those classes and it helps me a lot because geriatrics do have a special difference to them. And it's it's been phenomenal to have that little bit of background with it. And Diane, I appreciate you uh, touching upon the, um, that uh, the geriatric education program because someone in the registration asked, you know, um, what was the takeaway from the experience and how did it help prepare you for clinical rotations? And it sounds like it, it was a very helpful experience. For sure. And we're given opportunities throughout the school year or the didactic year to have more time with geriatric patients. We get volunteers within like the local facilities, um, assisted living or independent living um, and like we can have dinner with them. We can spend time with the memory care patients. It's if I didn't get that beforehand, I would I would feel a lot less sufficient in my knowledge of how to interact with these patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gina or Diana, in that experience, Dr. Vilmore did um, share that there's an opportunity to connect at some points with other UNE um, health profession students. Was that a part of your experience in the program, um, or what what might that have looked like for you? Yeah, um, so there are a lot of interprofessional events throughout the year where you interact with students from just about every health profession on campus, um, kind of like they, uh, Dr. Vilmar touched upon in the presentation. Um, UNE is really unique because it is a campus of just health professions. Um, and also in our IJEP class, we work with pharmacy students, uh, dental student, or 
dental students in another class, um, PT students. And I found that to be really beneficial because um, especially I found that in my family med rotation, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people get referred to PT or OT. And I think that is so helpful to, you know, actually have some understanding of what kind of services um, different professions offer and um, how we can all kind of come together to provide patients with um, the best care and come at it from a holistic perspective. Um, thank you, Gina. That's very helpful um, insight to share. Um, I want to ask Dr. Vilmore and, and uh, Professor Beats Withers, why was it important to incorporate some of that world, real world training with the MAT training and the MOAB? Excuse me if I pronounced that acronym wrong, but why was that important to incorporate that into the first year curriculum or into the, the PA program? Throwing a curveball, this wasn't on the list of questions that I sent earlier. <laughs> so I'm actually happy to tackle that. And I'll actually start with the MOAB training. Um, I think where I see, so, um, so MOAB, for those of you who are not familiar with that course, stands for Management of Aggressive Behavior. Um, psychology and psychopathology run through every medical specialty. You will not be able to pick a medical specialty where you will not deal with psych and where you will not deal with behavior in some way, shape, or form. Um, our patient population has become increasingly challenging to work with in the post-COVID era. Um, expectations of us as healthcare providers have changed and the likelihood that any one of us is going to deal with aggressive behavior or violent behavior in our practices is increasing by the day. Um, we want our students to graduate not just being able to become PAs, but being able to remain PAs and have a long and successful practice where they are safe, where they're not getting hurt, and where they can facilitate safety for their colleagues. Um, as far as MAT, um, I would say, first of all, it is a marketable skill. Um, it is finally becoming easier to prescribe medication-assisted therapy for treatment of substance use disorders, um, but there were many barriers to prescribing that therapy for quite some time. There are still some barriers to prescribing that therapy. Uh, it makes you more marketable as a provider um, and gives our students a big role in combating a public health crisis and puts us really at the forefront of having some benefit and the impact in managing the opioid epidemic um, in New England and elsewhere. Thank you, um, Professor Beats Withers for um, touching upon that question. I think it's important to highlight the importance of why those, um, why those that training is incorporated into uh, the PA program. And, and Gina and Diana, did you both do that? Uh, both the VMAT training and the MOAB? We'll take it as yes. <laughs> People might be typing too. Um, and uh, it's so funny, we're running just a couple of minutes until we end the session. So let's focus on um, the clinical year because I'd love to hear from Gina and Diana about what you're doing right now give us a sense of where you're at in your second rotation and how things are going. So Gina, do you wanna um, share um, a little bit more about what you're doing in SACO, I think I heard? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm doing my family, my first family medicine rotation um, in SACO right now. It's been an awesome experience. Um, I've seen a wide variety of patients. Um, I was in Farmington for my last rotation doing pediatrics. So that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, I, you know, it's funny because the last time we did this was a little over a month ago. And I think we were in like the first or second week of our rotations and now we're in the last week. So it's kind of crazy. Um, but I definitely feel really comfortable. Uh, and I've actually developed like a new found appreciation and excitement for family med. Um, I wasn't super excited about it to begin with, but I, I really like primary care now and I'm kind of 
now considering maybe working in there someday. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. But um, that's the great part about rotations is that, you know, you get to try a little bit of everything and maybe something that you didn't expect uh, to like will jump out at you. Um, so it's been a really great experience. And I felt super prepared and have had really great interactions with preceptors and patients. And I'm looking forward to the next one. What is the next one, Gina, if you don't mind us asking? Another family med rotation. <laughs> oh, no. so you're going to continue on and continue to develop yourself in that in that area. So that's awesome. Um, Diana, what has your experience been like over the last couple of weeks since we last touched base with you in, in July? Uh, it's been awesome. I My preceptor went on vacation for two weeks, so I was Put with another provider, which opened up a whole new world of patient panel. Um, and their patient panel was completely different from my normal preceptors panel. And similar to Gina, at first I was like, okay, this is family med and I'm, I'm going to make the most of it. And then when I got this new panel with this other provider, I was like, this is great. Cause I had complex cases. I had patients who were willing to do the work. I had patients who were willing to argue, which I enjoy. Um, it was, uh, it was, it's been really great since the last time we all spoke. Um, and I'm really grateful that I've had that enlightenment with it. I'm committed to family medicine for two years postgraduate because I'm part of the service corps. So mm -hmm. it was very refreshing to be like, okay, I can be happy here for two years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, sh I'm I, I can only imagine that feeling, but um, it's wonderful to hear from you both. Um, the, the, the transition you've had in your experience over the last couple of weeks and how that has progressed. And um, maybe you'll go into your next rotation, although Gina, you're going into family med, so maybe it won't be entirely different, but as you go through all of these rotations, go through with an open mind and open to the experience. Maybe can you shed some experience around that or thoughts around that, Diana? I definitely can. I was gonna, mention once you stopped um, that the best way to approach clinicals is to make it what you want it to be. It's your it's your responsibility to go and get what you want to learn. So talk to your preceptors and say, I want to learn this, 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 and that. Are you able to help me with this? And how willing, you know, how how much can I do with you? And if you're forward about what you want to learn, most of the preceptors will be all for it. Um, and again, I agree with going in with an open mind because I've learned our, very quickly and only in my second rotation that the first week, major transition, new, new specialty or new people, new patients, it's different vibe. And so as long as you... Um, make it what you want it to be and you put the effort in and you keep that open mind and stay grounded. That's the best advice I can get. And if you need your support system, call them. It's okay to cry on the way home from clinical and be like, today was terrible. That's what your support system is for. And then you go back in the next day with a brave heart and you get it done. Mm -hmm. And Diana, where is next for you? I will be at uh, Penn Bay Hospital and Waldo County General Hospital for internal medicine inpatient. I'm actually looking forward to it because I get to be back in the hospital system and I find that chaos kind of enjoyable. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so with just a couple of minutes left, I do want to ask one question to um, Dr. Vilmore around just um, support for students during the second year, and then we'll do some closing questions. So can you just share a little bit about that, Dr. Vilmore? Sure. Yeah, you still have access to all of those things that you would on campus, but a lot of them you can do virtual stuff. Um, so for SASE, the Student Academic Success, Success Center, sorry, um, you can meet with tutors via Zoom. Um, you can meet with their learning specialists remotely too. Um, same with the Student Access Center, counseling um, if you need to. Um, and we are doing more with uh, check-ins for you. Um, and with your end of rotation seminars after each, uh, after every other rotation, so like you do two and then you come back to campus, um, you have uh, your advisor meetings during those times, so you get to catch up with them, but you can always have meetings with your faculty advisors if you need to during your clinical year. We're here for you still. 
Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. And I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I know that we probably didn't get cover everyone's questions or areas of interest, but we want to kind of treat this as an onion that we're going to continue to peel back the layers. And over the course of the fall, we do have our events and we have some virtual events lined up where we're going to have some targeted time around the first year curriculum, really diving deep, second year. Um, but I, I think one area that I want to end on that maybe all of our panelists can speak to is just the, um, what is the culture like at UNE and within the PA program? What's, you know, how do, how do you feel, you know, being a part of the UNE PA program? So whoever wants to jump in, maybe then we can do a bit of a domino. Um, I think that the best word to describe it is just camaraderie. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, the PA students are some of the best people I've met. And I think what's so awesome about PA school and in general is that everyone has such unique experiences and brings them all together. And we bring it all together. And like, you know, there are people who are really good at EKGs and people who are really good at reading x-rays. So we all kind of, it's like a big melting pot of skills and everyone genuinely wants to see each other succeed um, and is willing to give you whatever help or support you need. And PA school can be really hard, but it's really just nice to know that you have like 40 something other people who are going through the same experience. And honestly, I think the worst part about clinical year is that I miss like everyone. Oh, um, and I'm actually really excited to go back to campus next week because it's it's true. Like these are some of my best friends. Um, and it's just, they've made the experience so much more bearable um, and helped a lot. That's awesome. Anyone else wanna share their thoughts? I would just like to say that the admissions committee does an excellent job on picking their candidates and their students because similar to Gina said, the camaraderie is great. Um, and I said in our last webinar that it's essentially, they pick all the misfits from everyone and everyone is completely different. We all have our own issues. We all have our own strengths. And somehow we combine together and it's like the greatest family ever. And I would second what Gina said is that I have made some incredible friends through this program that will likely be lifelong. Um, so the admissions committee does a stellar job on picking the right people. Yeah, because I'm sure going through PA school is a very unique life experience that what you develop uh, alongside your colleagues and the students above you will last throughout your entire career and your lifetime. So that's really awesome to hear that you found like a space and a place that provides you that. Dr. Vilmore, do you want to share a thought, a couple thoughts? Yes, I would say we don't pick the misfits. We pick the cream of the crop. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, but yes, we, we take the interviews really seriously. We get over 1,500 applicants for 50 spots, and um, it can be very difficult to choose. Um, but we're looking for those people who really know what a PA is nowadays, what we can do, um, where we're going, but also somebody who is professional, who is adaptable, um, and is ready to take on the behemoth that is being in medicine. And if you enjoy that and you love taking care of patients, that's who we want and that's who we pick. Well, a group of passionate people all around the same thing. Mm -hmm. Professor Bates Withers, anything to add? Cause we're, we're gonna end the conversation on you um, and we'll all enjoy the rest of our evening. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I would just like to thank Jessica and Elise for all of their hard work in putting this program together, um, to Gina and Diana for taking the time out of their rotation schedules to be here with us, um, even though clinical year is a little bit less busy than didactic year, it is still busy. There is still a lot to do. Um, so we appreciate you taking the time to be here. Um, and Dr. Wilmore, thank you for giving me the chance to represent our program and yeah. talk with everyone who may be coming to join us in the coming years. Well, thank you all so much for your thoughts and um, your inputs tonight. We could spend hours together and maybe we'll do that if you join us for our September open house. 
Um, there's some more details on when it will happen, but it will be a nice opportunity to come meet our PA program in person, connect more, and get a sense of our, our, our campus too, because you will be spending at least a year there and, and coming back periodically, it sounds, for uh, your second year. So um, please don't hesitate to reach out, uh, connect with Jess around any admissions related question, any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out and we'll do our best to direct them to the right folks in the program as well. But thank you, Dr. Vilmore. Thank you, Dr. Um, excuse me, Professor uh, Bates Withers, Diana and Gina It's coming to the end of the evening. So let's all in, relax and enjoy. Um, and we look forward to the next time we can connect with you. Thank you so much for more, learning more about our PA program tonight. All right, we're still recording, but wanna do a nice little wave to everyone. Thanks for joining and, and thanks again. So have a good evening.